Good morning. Uh, morning, all. Hope you're well. Um, Amira, Leon, Dale, Silver, let me know if I'm coming through okay. You might see a little bit of a difference in camera quality, do you? I've just, uh, I've just set up my new camera down there. I know it's a different angle, but I don't have a long enough cable to kind of move it there and get it in its proper home. But um, do you see a little bit of a difference? Do you see a little bit better quality? Let me know. Loud and clear, thanks, Dale. <clears throat> Looks and sound nice. Thank you, Silver. I appreciate that. So I finally, I'm st finally starting to figure it out. I'm finally starting to figure out all this technical mumbo jumbo. Um, thanks, Leo, mate. Yeah, I wasn't just, I, I felt run down, you know. It wasn't COVID. I, I did a PCR, but I think I'm just overworking myself, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm doing so many videos and I'm, you know, God, I just think I need to take a little bit of rest sometimes. My body's telling me to, to slow down a wee bit, but. Unfortunately, I can't. I've got, I've got, you know, I think maybe still, still six or seven weeks before Simplicity launches. Again, some more delays, but uh, I think maybe the week before I re we relaunch, I might take a week off properly and just like relax and do nothing, because um, you know sometimes you need a break, and that was my body telling me, Ryan, you need a break. Slow down, slow down. So, hope everybody's well. Hope you've been trading okay. Um, and let's. Talk about the market, shall we? I'll let you type Dill before you, uh, I move on. <clears throat> so the uh, the Fed, I don't know if you watched that. I actually watched that last night. Um, hey, James. Uh, the Fed speak, obviously, we've had a 75 basis point rate hike. Um, it was, I wouldn't say it's unexpected after the CPI data. It was surprising to some i'd say a little bit obviously higher than what they expected but with that cpi data that came out we probably ought to expect the feds got acting in terms of of curving that inflation right so what i thought would be interesting a little bit to speak about now because i don't normally do this but i think it's important to get a little bit of kind of basic which which maybe some people some of the newer traders amira james maybe Maybe do you know, but maybe kind of come kind, of, kind of need to grasp, right? So, actually, I'll ask you guys. So, why why are we in the situation from a global wise that we're in now? So, why why do we have these inflationary concerns? What has happened, and um, you know, to to get us to this point that we are at now? So, I'm asking you guys. So, why is inflation basically um, getting to the highs it has been for a long time? What are the reasons? <clears throat> Printing money, yeah. Yeah, what else? Yep. But why? But why? Why have they done that? I'm going to ask this question quite a lot. <laughs> so what, what else has happened? You know, why are we here? What else has happened? <laughs> Global wise. What, what's, what's, um, what have we gone through the last few years? What global things have happened? Correct, Arima. Yeah, correct. China lockdown as well. So why has that stuff led to where we are? What what was the reasons behind that? Well, obviously, we've had these issues, right? <coughs> but if we talk about kind of an economic point of view, right? What is the things like COVID um, and 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 Russia Ukraine? What has that impacted? And again, this is, we can go very deep into this, but I just want to talk about a very basic kind of layman's explanation because some people might not know. Certainly some people, maybe you know, some of you here are experienced, um, but there's some people watching later and, and maybe newer traders here that don't know. Food chain energy, correct, Leon. So essentially what we're talking about is supply chain, right? Supply chain issues. So if we think about, um, <clears throat> if we think about very basic economics of supply and demand, right? Very basic, basic economics of supply and demand, where we're trying to reach equilibrium. Again, basic terms. There's some, there's some 
Um, if you talk about business sense, there's some companies that don't want that. For example, let's say, let's say Rolex, right? Who like that kind of gap between supply and demand because it creates, um, creates a willingness for their product. You know, for me, one of the watches that I want, wanted this for years, is a rose gold Daytona with a white face, and you can't get them anywhere. <coughs> anyway, that's by the by. So we think about that, right? Supply and demand. What's happened with, with COVID, right? With, with, with um, Russia and Ukraine is supply has uh, obviously increased. Again, talking about basics, right? Because of these supply chain issues with global events, right? So we've got this disequilibrium between supply and demand. <coughs> so when this happens, there's, there's, there's two things that, you know, let's say this happens naturally, there's two things you can do is one is increase supply or second is reduce demand, right? But when supply chain issues happen, I know this is not the best angle for me to kind of see this, right? We can't increase supply, okay, because of what's happening globally. So what's the other alternative? Because, so then what naturally happens? Correct, yeah, price. Price goes up, right? And in terms of prices, what are we talking about? So when we talk about supply chain, you kind of mentioned that um, a little bit there, Leon, but when we talk about prices, what are we essentially talking about in, in terms of a group? Think about what we look at on stream. What, what, what essentially is a group are we talking about in terms of prices from a, from a supply chain point of view? You've kind of, I mean, you've kind of said it, Leon. It's commodities, right? We're talking about commodities. So certainly when, you know, COVID, um, Russia, Ukraine, we've seen, we've seen a massive uptick in the prices of commodities, right? Oil, wheat, et cetera, et cetera. So from a business and from, from a consumer level, we think about um, uh, from a business standpoint, if you as a whatever, a bread producer, let's say, again, basic circumstance, if your um, cost of production has gone up because of your commodity prices has gone up, right? And let's say you've got your, your price, how do I do it, this is an in angle. You say you've got your, your prices here, here, right? And then you've got your, um, <laughs> I can't do this properly. You've got your uh, profit margin in your consumer price here. So right now you've done this, right? Because supply chain issues, commodity prices have gone up, your costs are higher, right? So there's, there's obviously something that business are gonna do they're gonna pass that price increase onto the consumer by the form of raising prices. Right, and that's essentially, you know, and there is other things to consider, all that kind of stuff. From, a, from essentially a basic economic standpoint, that is why we're in the situation we are now. So I don't know, I know James, you're a bit newer, Amira. Uh, I know you probably know that. There's some people that might not know that, but that's essentially what we're doing. Right, so what did the Fed do to control inflation is obviously the use of interest rates. So you stimulate throughout COVID, trying to stimulate the economy by lowering that. Uh, again, quantitative easing as well picks up in that. Uh, but that's why we've got this hike, because CPI data came out, and, and I, was, I was watching it yesterday. They're a bit, bit surprised by that data. So that's why they've taken the, um, the measure of raising interest rate to that 75 basis point level. And that's where we are in the economy. Now, we saw some volatility coming out yesterday. This is when um, Powell was speaking here. And I actually thought he was very good. Um, where, they're, where they're essentially trying by, he said in 2024, trying to get that 2% and 4% employment, which they're, they're confident in doing. Because there was a lot of stuff about, you know, you raise interest rates, you obviously, you, you certainly right now, you, you run the risk of running into a recession. But, you know, there's really no, there's, you know, <laughs> And the other interesting thing he was saying is, because everyone was talking about employment, but employment data, if you took it from a long-term view, it's still very good. So the U.S. economy is holding up well. There is that risk. You know, obviously there is that risk that we, we run into a recession. But, <coughs> you know, they, they've got to curb inflation. They've got to curb inflation. And, um, yeah, so, so we've got a massive hike. Oh, we don't have a mask guy. We've got an increased hike, and the market seemed to, you know, continuing in that downtrending fashion. So, 
let's talk about the technicals because that's obviously where my expertise lies. But I just wanted to kind of go through that because I think it's important for people to kind of know. So SPX, we broke into the lows. Um, we, we've, from a four hour perspective, we could have a slight daily extension here. We know markets fall a lot quicker than they rise. It may need a little bit of time today to let the market digest that news that came out yesterday. From a four hour perspective, um, again, we may have had a slight corrective from this decent drop to the downside and possibly continuing. So from a risk sentiment point of view, it's risk off. Um, from a four hour, from a technical point of view, I'd rather wait for this to break underneath the highs before I get more confident in a break um, or, or continued risk off movement because of that daily extension. So we could potentially, if London opens, have a, have a deeper corrective from this, these, um, you know, quite, quite a large impulse to the downside before um, I get more comfortable in saying continued risk off. So we could get a little bit, a few days of consolidation. Uh, it does look certainly a lot more bearish, but I'm waiting for a breakdown below. This could be corrective over from the four hour 20 catch up. Indexes do move slightly different to our currency pairs. Um, so if this was a currency pair, I'd say this is probably not enough for me, but um, let's, let's wait and see today on how the market reacts to that. But certainly for me, <coughs> it's risk off. It's, it's risk off. Okay, dollar. Excuse me one second, guys. I need to get a, a cup of water. <coughs> Coffin. One second, guys. I'll, I'll be right back. Sorry, okay, I'm back. <laughs> Little thing in my throat. I've been coughing for the last couple of days. Okay, dollar. Now, the dollar is, again, I'm not paying too much attention to this volatility we get over news. What, what normally happens is if we've got a trending direction market, we get that volatility, right, and then we continue within that trend direction. Normally, not all the time, but normally. Daily perspective on the dollar, we've broken through the highs. It, um, it does look good. We, we did indeed have that 50% pullback from that impulse. If you're buying dollar, you'd be quite happy right now. What it looks to be is, is you know, we're just, we're just pausing, possibly price acceptance above this area, continuation in the dollar longs. I know we've had this four hour bar here. Um, I know we've had a decent move to the upside. It, it does look potentially like a slight loss of momentum. So the daily does, I mean, the daily looks good, right? Daily looks good for the dollar. From a four hour perspective, I mean, I was looking at this. This is the first time I looked at the dollar this morning, actually. I do, uh, my bias for the dollar is up, right? My bias for the dollar is up. I, again, very similar to the SPX, where I'd like confirmation of a break above these highs before I go full on, let's buy the dollar again. But from a longer term perspective, yeah, dollar looks good to the upside. Wait for that confirmation of a break above. We could get possibly a little bit more accumulation in here. But, you know, it makes sense fundamentally for the dollar to be strong. So daily is good. Again, very simple trend continuation. This swing is now confirmed. Broke above the highs. It may, it may consolidate here. Uh, it may consolidate here but ultimate bias is for dollar continuation to the upside. That's the easiest way for me to say that. <clears throat> okay, watch this today. I'm in a EuroCAD, um, EuroCAD short as an aggressive entry, which um, I happened, thankfully, to get in on here. So I saw it. I didn't see on this four-hour close. I actually thought this was not going to set up with, with how, um, how price action was moving. But we obviously got our large bearish engulfer coming on increased volume from this setup abc v reversal um on that 200 that for me is a great an aggressive entry all day that absolute aggressive entry all day so i saw it here <coughs> i saw it here put my order in got tagged in on that volatility of, of fomc Looking for this to come down, and um, again, could be an option for a breakout, but for me, going with that longer-term trend on the daily, 
I could have taken this today as a, as a daily aggressive as well on that ABC there, on that um, inverted hammer. But that is a trade all day. Again, just going with that trend. So EuroCAD, potential continuation shorts. They're still on for their breakout. There's potentially still on for this as well uh, on a B wave break here. So there's multiple options for EuroCAD shorts. And uh, I like that. I like it. So EuroCAD, I'm in. Uh, I need to put my SAR in here because that's obviously my exit indicator. But looking for this to break through the level and continue that trend. Very simple. Very simple. Yeah, no problem here. No problem. Okay, breakouts, quite a few on the list. EuroCAD was done. Euro Swiss is another. Euro Swiss on this four hour. Very similar to, to EuroCAD, actually. Um, head and shoulders here, we're getting a pullback. Quite a large basing structure, so we need a large secondary structure to account for that. We're kind of getting it. What we may be in for is potentially this, which is why I put an area here, because I could look for a breakout above B wave. If we do come down for a C or potential uh, potential shallow C, but price needs to come up. Whether we the Swiss strengthens up on that risk off, we'll have to wait and see. Um, but this is this is a pretty nice context. Again, we go to the daily. We're kind of getting our our. It, the daily's not great, but there's certainly a case. <coughs> Sorry, guys. <coughs> there's certainly a case for uh, movement to the upside on this head and shoulders as context. I understand we could be in this, right? Our corrective is against trend, but there's certainly something there warranted for Euro Swiss to the upside if we do get a push in this market. So Euro Swiss potential longs. USD czar, USD czar, this is, this is something that I do like. From this daily perspective here, we've got our initial basing structure. So our initial basing structure, our pullback. This for me wasn't enough as an aggressive. I think uh, from this latest impulse, I probably needed a little bit more. And I'm looking for an aggressive somewhere in this third structure. So potentially with this price action. So with the price action we're getting now, because it's a little bit impulsive to the downside, if we turn into a, a complex corrective here, then absolutely I'd be looking for an aggressive entry up in here and potentially a breakout on USD czar on that daily to the upside. USD dollar strength, uh, you'd expect USD czar to increase because of that. It's a trade that I would like to get involved in. You know, I like that setup. Um, I like the idea of buying the dollar against the, the, the czar. Uh, just need the price action to, to get me in. So USD czar, potential longs. If we can get it, maybe around that 200, probably not. But, you know, you got the 200 there, which is this, this won't happen. But essentially something like this to get me in as aggressive would be really nice on USD czar. Nice chart. <coughs> Morning, Nick, mate. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> this is the first time I've properly spoken in a, in a few days. Um, my, um, <clears throat> yeah, still coughing. Aussie Kiwi. Aussie Kiwi, almost an entry in yesterday. Wasn't quite a, um, a catalyst for me down here. So you did get our, our complex ABC corrective from this, this cup with handle context back to that 20. Just not enough there. And I don't think the volume was there either to get me in a breakout retest. Now there was lowering volume on that catalyst, not really an engulfer. So didn't quite get in on that. I like where the daily is. Again, very simple price action going with that trend back to 20 outside bullish engulfer. Higher time frame confluence is there for an Aussie Kiwi long. From a four hour perspective, which is what I'm looking at now, we've obviously got our basing structure here, looking for our secondary structure, something like this to get me in on that continued uptrend in Aussie Kiwi, Aussie New Zealand longs. CAD Swiss. CAD Swiss is interesting, right? This is probably the closest to, to a potential order, which could actually come today. So I like the area we are in. CRV reversal here. You can look at this as a head and shoulders if you want to, but context is right. The only niggling thing that I have with CAD Swiss, right, is this daily. So from a weekly uh, perspective, again, from a higher time frame confidence, from a weekly, it's good. From a daily, it's whether I think that this needs a little bit more in here before we move to the upside. 
Okay, I know we had a wick in terms of, of a pullback from this latest impulse, but from a price action point of view, my only worry is that we need a little bit more before we push to the upside. However, if we do get a good close here on this four hour, which, which will come in two hours and 10 minutes, that would be a reason, not an aggressive, but that would be a reason for me to take a breakout. This is nice accumulation. This is a nice reversal. This is a nice area to take a breakout from. And from a four hour perspective, you know, you look at this as a head and shoulders, right? It does look digested enough. I just worry that do we need a little bit more on that daily? So do we do this, right? Do we do this before we move up? I mean, every trade has obviously a, a counter trend argument or the, the argument the other way, but I do like that. I do like that. Let's see how this four hour closes. Uh, and I, th uh, and I think it's worth a, a move to the upside. I think it worth, it's worth a move to the upside. So although yes, okay, price action may need a little bit more, but it also may not. It also may not, you know, things, things um, don't have to go exactly as we say, sometimes momentum can just be good. So CAD Swiss, let's see how it performs for the rest of the day. Uh, it could be an order in there. EU. Euro USD shorty, got our basing structure here. Looking for our handle or our accumulation to continue Euro USD to the downside. Something like this to get in, shorts, not much to say on that. Buying the dollar makes sense. Um, continue with that trend makes sense. Just need the, the price action to set up so I can short it, Euro USD. <coughs> Pound Swiss. Pound Swiss from a, from a higher time frame confluence is good. V reversal on that daily. The weekly is obviously very good um, going with that trend. For our perspective, we've got our basing structure here. We could be getting into a head and shoulders. Cup structure coming in for a second. I don't think I'm looking at an aggressive here because of the impulse. Unless it turns into a complex corrective, then I can look at potentially something at C-Wave to come back down and continue Pound Swiss to the downside. I like that trade as well. Just got a little bit to go before it sets up. But yeah, for me with an aggressive, I don't, very similar to the ABC, right? Very similar to the ABC, one, two, three. It just, it just digests this, this initial reactionary impulse from our support zone. Um, and I'd rather wait for that rather than taking something like this as an aggressive entry, which for me doesn't look very nice. <laughs> there you go, that's quite good. I had Royce in here all last night. <laughs> Cute cat, actually. Cute cat. <laughs> uh, okay, what was the last one? USD Singapore dollar was the last one. USD Sing. From a daily perspective, again, we know what we're looking at, right? V reversal up in here, looking for this to be digested. Buying the US dollar right now certainly makes sense. Up in here, something potentially aggressive, but cut with handle, breakout to the upside, USD Singapore dollar, continuing with that overall trend. Um, very simple. Very simple things. Most of these are, are looking at trend, which is quite good. We always like to be on the side of that trend, apart from possibly um, Euro Swiss. But every other one of them that I do like, Euro CAD I really like, Aussie Kiwi, I like the idea of. Uh, USD Czar, I really like. Cat Swiss. Cat Swiss is... Mm, ah. <coughs> Again, we've got to think about risk sentiment as well. I just worry, and maybe I, I always should go with that gut. That's my last kind of entry indicator is my gut feeling. But my gut feeling really likes that four hour. Like, I really like this. I like a little bit of mess here. I like the V reverse. I like where we're taking the breakout from. And ultimately, it's still going with that trend, right? Still going with that trend. And we, had ha we have had a slight pullback on this daily. So let's see how that goes. Let's see how that goes. Um, what else was there? Cad Swiss, Euro EU, yeah, like Pound Swiss, like USD. I like all of them. I'd get involved in all of them if I could, but obviously that's not going to happen. 
Right, anything you guys want me to look at before I uh, head off? Apologies for coughing a little bit, but uh, I'll get over it. I think I saw some ideas from you, Nick, right? Presume you're buying the dollar? Yeah, presume so. Against the pound, I can I know this without looking at it. Pound, Kiwi, Aussie, and what's the last one? Euro? Aussie, Euro. There you go. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, mate. Absolutely. From a daily perspective, I mean, I guess your entry's in the 15 minute, right? So your entry up in there. Looking to come down to the lows, yeah. They must be all at break even, right? Aussie dollar. Let's have a look at Aussie dollar. I mean, the four hours in a, in a, in a nice position, isn't it? I mean, yeah, look, I agree. Yeah, I agree with all of them. I agree with all of them. Daily there. It is an outside bullish and golfer on the daily, though. That would be a little bit of a worry for me, but... With those OBEs, sometimes you get some digestion within them, right? Before you move to the upside. But yeah, the premise of buying the dollar makes sense. Then profit, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Your shorts on the four hour and these are ones on the 15. Your shorts are the, are, are the ones you're already in, right? From somewhere up here. So I presume they're just running. <clears throat> yeah, good, good. So hopefully, what, we're, what I'm looking for with this aggressive is that first live double-digit trade, which would be lovely. Um, as I said, this is really nice. From a context point of view, if you're, if you're wondering about an aggressive, this is what you want to see. Because if we think about, and remember, this is the most important part of all our breakouts. So if we look at this move to the downside, it's digested really well, right? Up to that 200, outside bulls and gold for a strong close, strong volume, going with that trend. This is... I don't care if this loses, right? Because this is a, a, a class setup, a star, a star setup, and um, you take that all day of the week. So Eurocad, I, I kind of like, like to be in this position. Letting it do its thing, yeah, ride that wave, baby. You make your money by doing this, nothing. That's what I love about trading. You make your money, you make more money doing nothing than doing more things, which is great, right? Right, any questions? I feel like my, my throat's <coughs> easing up now. <laughs> I should go for like a 20-minute warm-up before I start my stream because then I get into it. Anything else you guys want me to look at? Remember, 50K FTMO this month. I want to give these away. I've had one entry. One entry so far. So right now, this person has a 100% chance of winning it, which are pretty good odds if you want to be involved. Send me a message. Uh, and uh, you can be. You can be. Nothing else? Nobody want to chat? I feel like chatting now. Oh, sorry, I'm in, I'm in the wrong... Um, I'm, <laughs> I was in the wrong screen. I didn't see it. As traders, one of the most important things is to learn to do nothing. Yeah, took me a while. Took me a while to realize that doing less, you make more. Um, yeah, so I'm doing, I'm doing a video... I'm recording a video today on my five biggest trading mistakes, and uh, obviously one of one of my biggest issues, one of my biggest issues was over trading, right? I was okay. I, I never moved my stop loss. I was never one of those people that, um, you know, would move my stop loss not to get stopped out. That was an issue. But over trading was such a big issue for me. Um, so I'm trying to do. I'm basically trying to do 35 videos before Simplicity Trading launches, i.e., YouTube videos. So that I launched, um, I kind of have them edited, have them recorded so that when we launch Simplicity, I just kind of release them every couple of days and I have like three or four months worth of content to, to get out there. So that's what I'm doing. Um, you can see I've got, my, I've got my new lights in here. I can show you around a little bit now. So I've got my, I've got my thingy lights in there. I know some of you have seen that. That's my little area. I'm really liking it. Yeah, so this is the, I'm about to show you, I can't show you the camera. So I bought this new camera, um, which means, yeah, it should be a lot clearer and a lot better. I just don't have a long enough USB candle, or sorry, candle, 
a long a long enough USB cable because I'd like to put it somewhere here so the angle's not as weird. But uh, I need to go and buy a long USB cable. But moving up in the world, my friend, moving up in the world. Okay, um, I will love you and leave you. I'll let you type. You got a problem with the stream. Did I? The quality isn't great. Yeah, I think on Discord, the quality is not perfect, but when you, um, yeah, I think it's Discord. I have to use a VPN to do it. Yeah, no problem, Liam, no problem, Liam. I have to use a VPN, and I think it's just, I think it's just Discord, unfortunately. I don't know whether, I don't know whether if you guys would prefer if I do a private YouTube, but then I also like seeing who's in the room. The thing about YouTube is I, is I can't see who's there. But with Discord, I can see who's in the room, and you can kind of, I can kind of speak to you guys. So maybe it's something we do a test on and see what you guys prefer as we move on. But um, YouTube, it would be like 1080, and I'll, I'll probably be too clear. It's not something you'd want to see, Nikolai. My face in HD 1080p is not very nice. <laughs> okay, I'm going. I'm speaking too much now. I can just go on forever. Yeah, I know the chat. Yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I know. Don't worry. I'm just joking around, man. I'm just joking around. Most of the time it's been pro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe well, anyway, we we can just test it, Dill. We can we can test it. We can do a YouTube testing and say because YouTube will be ten eighty, right? It'll be pretty clear quality for the charts and everything. Um so if you guys like it, then we can I could just continue with that, but we'll see. Anyway, I'll go because I'm wasting all your time. <laughs> Have a great day. I'll see you all tomorrow. Trade safe and um, peace.